Shalom, we give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakadash. We give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and Shalom to the elect that's pushing out this word throughout the four corners of the globe in sincerity and in truth for the edification of the house of Dawadah. This is why we do these lessons. Shalom to you. Hope you're in good spirits. It's your brother Shema Ma for the DC camp. Uh, we have a new lesson. Hopefully it'll be edifying and not too long, but information must go out. So if it is long, excuse me, stop the video and come back to it. There's a lot of good information that I want to bring out. The subject today are the Grecians or the Greeks that are mentioned in the Bible. Now, in the Old Testament, before the Greeks came into power, because you don't see any Greek captivity of the Israelites in what we would call the Old Testament. The Greeks didn't come into power until after the Babylonian and the Persian rule. And that could be found in the Apocrypha, which no one says is canon. Um, they would just say it's history. But it's a very important uh, understanding of what the history tells us and why our people were called Gentiles, why they were called Greeks, why they were called Grecians. Because the Greek captivity had such a large influence on our people's minds and their spirits because what Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, what he did to Israel and what he did to the other nations will help influence the Israelites to believing in a people of no God or a people that had not the Heavenly Father. They were pagans. They didn't even call themselves Greek, but the influence of Greek ideas, so-called Greek ideas and influences became what today is known as Gentiles or Greeks. Greeks is a way of culture. It's a way of thinking. It had power and influence. So let's, let's get straight to it, right? A lot of information. The original Greeks were called Yawan, right? They are of, of the uh, Japhetic tribes, Yawan. They're not even Shemitic, right? That's first and foremost. Um, it was only one time where Grecian was mentioned in the scriptures in, in the book of Joel, the third chapter and the sixth verse. And we could read it real quick. Joel 3 and 6. Um, reading in the New Language Translation. I, I probably do both. But uh, Joel, third chapter, sixth verse. This is uh, KJV. And it says here, The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that you might remove them far from their borders. I'm going to read it in the KJV. It's a lot. Three. KJV. And the New Language Translation. And it's three and six. It says, You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks so they could take them far from their homelands. This is what the Lord had done. Let's look up this word Greek. Yawani, or what, uh, Yawanya, right? Uh, when you put the I or the Ya on the end of a word, it becomes um, a people, right? And it says Grecians of Ionia, 
Inonia. Let's look up the root word. Yawan. Yawan from the same as when you look at the root word etymology. Yawan. Wine. Banquet. That makes no sense. Meyer. Meyer. Makes no sense. Um, to the dregs, the dirt, the mud. That makes no sense to me. Um, why your one, the root word of your one, which is Ionia or Grecian, would be wine or mud. So we have to actually dig deeper into the understanding of this word, Greek or Grecian. When we see, and what I mentioned before, when we see the Apocrypha's scriptures in the book of Maccabees, which is the history of the Greek captivity and how we were destroyed, starting with Alexandria and going all the way to the Greek king that came through the line of the Seleucus Empire and we go all the way to um, Anti and Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. He really put the influence of the Israelites and all those around us into a quagmire. He forced the Greek way of life or the Macedonian, the Edomite way of of life onto all the world he conquered. He was the king of Syria, which was back then the Seleucus Empire, and we could read him in the book of Maccabees. Alexandria all the way to Antiochus, where Antiochus forced the Greek way of thinking, life, culture, religion, onto his, onto the people that he controlled. The histories call this the Hellenization of his empire. It was the it was the spread of Greek power and influence on everything. Where an Israelite could not say that he was an Israelite. He had to say that he was a Grecian or a Greek, not coming from Yawan, but coming from the thinking of being Hellenized. Hellenization was not negotiated. It was a treaty or law that you could not be who you are, but you had to be Greek. This is this is ultimate supremacy. And this is what Antiochus wanted for his kingdom. He wanted supremacy, which is understandable if you Satan. Satan want everyone to come under his influence. Yahweh wanted everybody to come under his influence. But The devil's influence was more powerful at this time because he was given time to rule. Let's look at this in the Apocrypha. No, uh, a lot may not understand what's going on in, in these scriptures and don't take to these scriptures, but, you know, that's on you. We understand that all scripture is given. All right, so let's get this uh, second Maccabees, the fourth chapter, and we're going to start at the 15th verse. This is second Maccabees, the fourth chapter, and the 15th verse. Second Maccabees 4. Now it says here, 
start at 12. It says, For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection, talking about Antiochus or Antiochus, and made them wear a hat. That's where you get the fashion of, of wearing uh, a fitted. He made men wear fitted hats mm. to show. To show their allegiance. And it says here now such was the height of Greek fashions wearing a hat. An increase of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest, because it was taught, it was part of the law, that you had to be this way. You had to be of a heathen type manner. This is what the Greeks, this was the Greek way. That the priests, right, the priests of Israel, being influenced by Antiochus and his laws, the priests had no courage to serve anymore at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus called them forth. And we just went through the Summer Olympics, and this is part of what Antiochus had done in his kingdom. He had these games where it would seem like we're just competing over sports, but really you being transformed into another fashion, his fashion, because the original Olympics... People or men were wrestling, running, discus, all in the naked, all in the nude. This was their way. This is the Greek custom to have these sports in the nude. Why men compete with other men in the nude makes no sense to me. But it made sense to them because they wanted you to let go of what you were brought up, right? Not seeing another man's nakedness. You are now brought up to deal with that and to wrestle with that and the discus and the run. All of these things were in the nude because the Greeks are freaks. And they wanted Israel to conform to their ways. And Israel did. Since Israel is the best of everything, right? We will win all the sports. We will win all the games. Receive some type of trophy and think we've done something. So today what they do, give a gold medal, give a silver medal. But then it was just the conforming of a people's understanding of who they are, where we all now become one in these games. The Greek fashion was the same way. You wear your hat, you be butt naked, you could sleep with anybody you want, men on men, women on women, wives with other men's husbands. It was just freak a zoid. This is what they are. And this is what our people are even today, where you speak about LGBT, you're looked at as being wrong. Wait a minute. The Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. How are you going to be fruitful and multiply with two men? or two women. It's the idea of conforming to another way of life is what the devil wants you to do. Conforming, right? So this Greek power and influence was throughout the kingdoms where all nations, if you wanted to 
prosper and not be um, how you would say, excuse my language, shitted on or destroyed, you had to conform to his ways. There was a time not too long ago when uh, Secretary of State Clinton, right, Hillary, had went to the African nations and said, if you don't allow gays to be in your society, you won't receive substance. You won't receive grain and rice. You won't receive money, loans for the uplift of your people if you don't conform to the LGB thing, the LGP, elemental P thing whatever they call themselves. So the influence of those who are in charge of the world or control the world, the influence is so strong that the lower class people or the people under them really had no recourse. But we do have a recourse. We do have a way out of that thinking is to go against the grain. And this is where people falter. They don't want to go against their own way of thinking to better themselves than to lay down, be lazy, and do what other people say to do. Even though you know better. You can't get out of your own way is the problem. The Lord said that you could do all things in your Hawashah. That, that, that means everything. Everything can be done, right, without the influence being so strong on you. And this is what we have to believe. In these up-and-coming days, this is what we're going to have to believe. We're going to have to believe that there is a power greater than the powers that be. Where they would call you words, anti-Semitic against the Jews, against this, against that. No, you're not against a people. You're against the ideas of these people where no negotiation is needed. There is no negotiation in holding up to what you believe. Right? Going back, it says, Verse 15, not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. See? So forget about the past. Forget about what our fathers have taught us. Right? We're going to go with the Grecians because the Grecians seem more reasonable. It seems okay. They convinced us that this is the way to be in order to receive something. But that's not the case. The devil wants you to conform to his ways instead of the ways of your father. That's the only reason. It says here, by reason whereof sore calamity came upon them, talking about the Israelites, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers whose custom they follow so earnestly and unto whom they desire to be like in all things. Well, if your desire is to be like the devil, well, you're going to be the devil. You're going to receive the devil's reward, which is death and destruction. Not only of you, but all you, all those who you influence is going to die right along with you. Instead of conforming to what your forefathers have taught you. Regardless of the situation, regardless of what your eyes see, you must stick with what the Lord had given us. He gave us law, statutes, and commandments. He told us what to eat, what not to eat, what to do, what to wear, how to treat our brother. But we just threw that all away to conform to another way of life. And this is what the Grecian, the Grecians, the Greeks, starting with Alexander, had such an influence because the Lord gave him this power. 
The Lord Yahweh gave him this power so great that we could not see any other way out. When we look in the New Testament, right? Grecian and Greeks are not really used a lot, but what we see is um, um, what we see is what well, we see Greeks, but we see um, the word behind it, which is Hellenist. The word behind Greeks and Grecians or Grecian Jews was Helen or Hellenist. These are the Judean Jews, right? Who later had trade and commerce, and there was no distinction between them, meaning the Jews that was living the Greek life and the Jews who was influenced and the Jews are all the same people. There's no distinction between them two. So when, it's, when, when, when um, the, the scriptures say there's neither Jew nor Greek, they're the same. They're Israelites who either knew they were Jews or Jews that didn't know they were Jews and calling themselves Greeks or Grecians in that way of life, in that way of thinking. Never circumcised their sons, never brought up in the Israelite culture, but they were still of the stock of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's get this. Acts the sixth chapter book of acts in the new testament sixth chapter first verse it says let me get this in uh so let me get this in uh, king james version it says here and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied there uh, there arose a murmuring of the grecians against the hebrews this is black on black crime. There was Grecians who didn't know that they were Israelites following the Greek way of life against the Hebrews, which tried to fight, which tried to follow the law, statute, the commandments, and it was a murmuring against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Well. It was always a riff amongst Israel who those who followed the law or try to follow the law and those who just totally disregard the law and followed Greek fashion. They dressed like them. They thought like them. They even followed the gods and the Greek philosophers, right? Socrates and uh, Plato and all these guys who spoke well but they didn't speak from our law, statute, and command. But they didn't speak from our fathers, even though they were black men, so-called black men. But they had this way of life of Greekish fashion. Well, if God wanted you to be this way, why did he make you this way? You know, it was, it was always a riff or something against what we've been taught from the very beginning, that you were supposed to abide by the law, statutes, and commandments that you sacrifice to. But now you want to throw all those things away and now question God. And that was the Greekish way. The Greekish way was put away your law, follow this. And this could be all over the place because it was never built on a foundation, right, that could sustain a people. It scattered the brains of the people. So the Jewish law or the Hebrew law, right, was spoken of badly and vice versa. When we look at John, the book of John, the seventh chapter and the 35th verse, it says here, then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? Well, let, let's let's go up. This says, uh, verse 32. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured. 
right? Always. It was our people always murmuring. We murmured every, all, going all the way back to the desert, to, to Moses. We always murmured what God is going to do for us or why God got us in this, in this situation. Well, it's actually you got yourself in this situation, okay? It says here, the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, talking about Yahweh and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him, right, to arrest him. Then Yahweh said unto them, yet a little while I am with you, and then I go to him that sent me. You shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither you cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, where will he go that we shall not find him? We, see, because they believe that they have the power to track anybody down. This is our people against our people. When you see black cops beating down black uh, uh, citizens, chokeholds, just straight strangling them out, these are the same mindset of what was happening back then. Black on black, right? No forgiveness, no mercy. So the Lord said, I'm going somewhere and you can't even find me or you can't even come. So the Pharisees, the chief, the chiefs uh, and the leaders of the people said, man, where you going that we can't find you? This is they. this is their prowess. This is the thing that they thought they had power to do. That's because the devil influenced. If anybody rises up among you, you're going to lose your place in Rome. We giving you money. We giving you a, a, a time. We giving you a, a place to, to, to call your God. We let you have your temple. As long as you pay your taxes. And this is how people, you've seen it in the, in the DNC, uh, uh, um, uh, the Democratic uh, National Convention. You see all those coons? Black coons. As long as we pay our taxes, everything's going to be better. Oh, really? You shouldn't be paying taxes. Taxes should be given to you. If you're in your right position in life, where we're supposed to be, people supposed to be taxing Israel, not the other way around. See, we got it all twisted up and and the minds of our people think that it's going to get better. It can't get better until we change our thinking. And that's the whole point. This Greek fashion, just like the sororities and the, and the fraternities in, in, in the colleges, got people thinking of this Greek way of life. But it's really to your, your demise. It says, what ma it says, whither will he go that we should not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Showing you that the mindset of these people knew that there were a people who were not like us, but really were us. They were Israelites into a Greekish way of living. So, the Pharisees being sarcastic and say, what, he going to go to them and not speak to us? Well, you didn't want to hear it because you're of, you of, of, of your father, like the scriptures say, you are of your father, the devil or Satan, because you adversarial to what the law, statutes, and commandments of the Israelites have for you that keep you alive. This is the book of life. These are the statutes and commandments that give you life. And you don't want that. And you feel neglected when I don't teach you. Well, if I stop teaching you because you're not listening, that's on you, not me. This is the way of life that the Greeks had for us and what we took wholeheartedly without question. It says here, the little uh, information that I wrote, 
the distinctions could in no way be absolute. It says, indeed, the dispersion among the Greeks can hardly refer to anyone but Greece and Jews. Although Helens is used, right, in John 12 and uh, 20, the Greeks who went up to worship at the feast of the Passover was certainly Grecian Jews. Let's get that. John 12. There's no distinction. John 12 and 20. It says here. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Greeks can't worship in our temple. That's a no-no. But there were certain Greeks that came. Well, what does that mean? There was three times a year that an Israelite had to go to Jerusalem. Three times a year. So if these Greeks came to worship, they had to be Jews. They had to be. It said the same came, therefore, to Philip, which was at Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see, we would see Jesus, asking about Yahweh Shai. Jesus coming and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew telleth Philip to tell Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai answered him, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall on the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if I die, it bringeth forth much fruit, which means I can't see these people right now. I can't see these Grecians. The Grecians or the Greek Jews or the Hellenized Jews wanted to speak to Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai said, you know, all this time that I've been here, now you want to see me. Well, I got a mission. My father said, I got to die on the cross. So then you could come in. Not now, because if you get it now, it's going to be out of order. So the the, the talking of Yahweh Shai to make it plain had to go through the apostles. It says here, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that love, that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life or life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servants be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. So it's a time and a place to get this understanding. So at the time, the Greeks wanted to, they wanted to know why was this urgent uh, desire to seek the Lord at this time and place, right? so important to them well because we have a spirit of Yahweh that teaches us when you hear of a prophet and he says certain things that tweak your spirit you got to seek after it it says get up be times that means urgently and this is what the spirit of these Hellenized Greek uh, Hellenized Jews was seeking after <clears throat> reading on in, in uh, my little uh, information says while the English version of the Bible consistently re renders Helens with Greeks we are not by the rendering appraised or prized of the real character of the people that were designated this, gift, this difficulty is exaggerated by the fact already noted in a connection with the Old Testament Apocrypha, that in consequent of the spread of Hellenism, the term Hellens was applied not only to such as were of Hellenistic descent, but also to those who had appropriated the language of Greece as a universal means of communication and the ideals and customs collectively known as Hellenism. The later was thus in the strict sense Hellenists, the assimilated Jews, differing from the Grecians of the English version, only in that they were not of Jewish descent. In other words, Hellens, except perhaps John 7 and 35 and 12, uh, John 12 and 20 noted, 
is in general equivalent to Gentiles. The various readings of the manuscript and hence the difference between the King James Version and the Revised Version of the British and American in 1 Corinthians 1 and 23 well is illustrate this. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 1 and 23. It says here, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Yahweh crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. And I always want to get that scripture out on the highways and the byways because it means so much that the Jews require some type of miracle, some type of sign. Just, just let us know plainly. Then the Greeks of the same people, the Israelites, always want some type of word to convince them that this word is true. Well, you're not going to get either because the Lord said that the only sign you're going to receive is the sign of Jonah where Jonah was in the belly of the whale in hell three days. That's all you're going to receive. Now, think. Who did that happen to? The belly of hell for three days and then came back out. Yahweh Shai. That's the only understanding you're going to receive on this time, in this time. Because if you really sought salvation and really sought deliverance, you will seek these things out and understand of what the scriptures is telling you over and over and over again. Well, our people, ah, forget it, it's too much, it's too much hard, I got to read too much. It's a waste of time. I got better things to do. Okay. You're missing out on your own blessing. Simple, plain, period. This Western standard of Greek native speaking or language, right? Where it was different from Hebrew is still pagan. Even the language is pagan. We're not supposed to speak of other gods. We're not supposed to name those other gods. All of these things did nothing for us. We only know but one, and that's Yahweh. That's the only God we know. That's the only God we ought to know. Nothing else matters. This is what we were taught. To put these names in, even into our mouth is going against the scriptures. These words, these names of other gods, Allah, Buddha, all these other gods, shouldn't even be mentioned, but we mention them so we can edify the people that goes right back to our law. Greek, English is not our mother tongue. We need to go back to the Hebrew to understand what our creator wanted from us. Multi, multi, the multitude of thought, you know, how we got in, 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 in this democracy we have where um, majority rule. Well, that's not with Israel. Yahweh rules. And if you don't get behind him, you will get crushed like a steamroller. There's no other way. There's not a there's not a discussion on the matter. There's no discussion on the matter. You see that? Isaiah 9 and, and 8 through 21, right? It talks about the Philistines and, and the Greeks. When you look into it, the Mediterranean basin, all its surrounding of the Mediterranean uh, the Mediterranean Sea all the, uh, you had the Greeks to the north and the Romans to the north then you had the Israelites to the to the uh, south uh, southeast 
and going all the way down to Africa, you know that this influence spread like wildfire, like wildfire over this region. And because this was a time of no telephone, no newspaper, word got out. Word got out so much that people sought these things because back then to travel from one place to another was very expensive. People didn't have money like that. So word of mouth became our telephone, became our newspaper. And it was very important to listen to the right newspaper. You didn't, you didn't watch or you didn't read um, uh, the comic section. You didn't read um, the National Enquirer. You got the information from the source, and the source was your people. You can't go to another people and learn about you. So the influence of the Greeks and the Philistines in that region was very very tight, very strong. So just going to come to a conclusion, leave you with a uh, scripture. This is, uh, this is first Corinthians one and 18. It says here for the preaching of the cross is to slot. First Corinthians one and 18. It says for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us, which are saved in is the power of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and, most, and mostly Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai brought the understanding of why all this happened. Why were we lifted up, taken down, and now lifted up again? And that's the greatest story in every cowboy movie, every, every great script in Hollywood. That there were a people in the beginning that was so great, got taken down by the adversary, but then received reward at the end because they learned. They learned how to go back to their roots and not be influenced by the in-between. It says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And this is so important. That they believe, these people, they believe the influencers. Now they have influences in social media. But the influencers believe that they are so strong and so wise. But the Lord said he's going to bring all that understanding down to nothing. So he asks a rhetorical question. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? Oh, we thought a combustible engine, the car, was a great thing. But we also found out the combustible engine kills us. Wait a minute. How can it help us and kill us all at the same time? You see? So the wisdom that bought the car engine that bought the steam, uh, 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 the, the locomotive, we thought that was doing good. Matter of fact, let's kill all these trees, chop them all down, and put homes. That sounds like a good idea. We need homes, right? But then you got the deforestation, and then you got the ozone layer being depleted with nothing but greenhouse effect. So you thought you had a good idea, you thought you had wisdom, but really it was your death. Carbon monoxide killed people. Green zones and, and, and ozones that are depleted kill people. But you thought it was a good idea. So the Lord said, I'm going to have to destroy the wisdom of these wise or thought to be wise people. For after that, in the wisdom of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the world by wisdom knew not God. They don't know God. 
all they know is their bright ideas. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe and only believe them. They believe we go to outer space, we go to the moon, we going to be a better people? No. You never made it to the moon. But anyway, that's another subject. You think that cars and locomotive did help you? But it destroys us. So that didn't do no good. Like commerce wasn't made in the ancient world on camels and horses. We got food from place to place. We had boats and ships, right? The trade was still on the trade routes. So don't say that you need it faster. You need it bigger. You need it better when it destroys you. You see, it's that thinking that gets you in trouble. That thinking need to be changed. It says, um, so in conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, saying all that, Greeks, Gentiles, ethnos, genos, in conclusion, there is a whole lot of confusion out there. And this is what the devil wanted. He always wanted confusion. Confusion keeps everyone off balance. Our lives are unbalanced. Our diets are unbalanced. Our world is unbalanced. Our people are unbalanced. Everything is confusion where you got men dressing up like women. Women being men. This is all a result of being unbalanced and confusion. You take a girl out, her penis might be bigger than yours. You'd be like, hold up, what the hell am I got here? What's going on? This is very impossible to live, to live through, to even understand. You're confusing the masses by your way of thinking and the limited knowledge of the facts in particular cases to clear up the general thinking. You would think that this way of life is, a, is what we should need. Let's gravitate to this way of life, this thinking. No. See, the Israelites, are, they have a whole different set of laws. In this world, pork is good. Pork is served in restaurants, which the Lord, our Lord, said not to even touch, let alone eat it. But you got people paying top dollar for lobster and crab and shrimp. Just things that you're not even supposed to eat. Matter of fact, it's not even food. But this way of thinking got our people all confused. Some people would say, but why it tastes so good? You're not even supposed to be tasting it to know what it tastes like. That's no excuse. But the, ex the, the assimilation by Greek influence and culture and manners from the 4th century B.C. through to today is still holding tight on our people's brains and spirits and minds and bodies. This happened started with the 4th century BCE. This happened after the return of the exiles from Babylon. From that time on, we were all confused on what's going on. Coming back from a slavery that we never saw before. It bugged people out. 
the inhabitants did not even observe the law. We could read that in Ezra and Nehemiah. They didn't even want the law anymore because the Babylonian influence had twisted their minds and they thinking. Then Alexander come in and just kicked the door down. This so-called victory by Satan can't last but for so long. It has to be destroyed. It's not, it's not the people per se. It's the thinking that has to be destroyed. This culture, this art, I'm not even going to talk about music, this thought, that people have. I could do all, I could be bad all by myself. Women thinking, don't need a man. All that's going to be put to death. All of that thinking. That's not the way of an Israelite life. That's not for us. That's for them. Let them destroy themselves. They have no kingdom coming anyway. We have the kingdom coming. To us, this spirit is too profound and accepted even today in these societies. We give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Shemiah, Shai, Ba'ashim, Shalom.